<clears throat> yeah, I shaved my mustache off. Now I look Amish. And I go churn some fucking butter. <laughs> Let's see what Hunter Avalon has to say. This is going to be a very Whoa. special video. This what was that. What's with the knuckle crack? Like, oh, yeah, man. You ready for an internet boxing match? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Woo. Yeah. What? <laughs> are you cracking your knuckles for? We're not going to have a barroom brawl, are we? Maybe we will. I don't know. I'm going to crack my neck. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When you crack stuff, that's when you know it's battle time, bitch. It's time for you and me. Mono e mano, huh? All right. That's a nice picture. This is TJ Kirk, also known as the Amazing Atheist. Uh -huh. He was once a very popular, prominent YouTube channel back in like 2009. Now I actually. Oh. Damn, dude. Vicious. He was once a prominent channel back in like 2009. Nine, 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 nine. It's 10 years past my heyday. 10 years past my expiration date. It's kind of funny because our channel views are like about even. So <laughs> if I was once prominent and now I'm not, you have to be admitting that you're not prominent and never have been. It's kind of interesting that you would say that, you know, considering our daily channel views are roughly the same. I think you got a little higher. Good job. I, I'm proud of you. I used to like TJ because he would make some funny anti-SJW and anti-feminist videos. TJ also played a small role in pushing me away from my belief in God, even though people still propagate nonsense that I'm a Christian creationist. Now, I've known for quite some time that TJ is not the most fond of me. His cute little podcast used to... I have no feelings about you whatsoever, dude. I don't really know much about you. Um, I feel like I've seen some of your videos and they've universally been really bad. Uh, they're not even bad in the sense of like you're a bad presenter, although sometimes you are. But, I mean, you got talent. I mean, you know, uh, you obviously have an ability to connect to an audience and to uh, present things in a way that is, uh, you know, comes across as professional and interesting and dynamic. And you have charisma. You can connect with the people. Uh, that's not really my objection. My objection is that you're full of shit. That you just lie nonstop. That you're intellectually dishonest. You know, that kind of stuff. Uh, so I object to you on that basis. I don't want it, you, it to come across like um, I'm coming at you like, you know, you just suck across the board. Um, you know, it's really a matter of not really the, the powers that you have as an entertainer. It's how you use those powers that I object to. But, uh, you know, we'll probably get into that as the video goes on. Always do responses to my videos. He's dissed me in his own videos. I mean, it's obvious. TJ hates me almost as much as he hates showers. But finally, finally. Yeah, I do hate showers. Uh, I, I hate showers significantly more than I hate you. Like, if I have to take a shower, I'm like, oh, God, I'm, 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 a, I'm getting all greasy again. By the way, the, the title of this video is uh, Greasy Liberal Calls Me Out, and then in parentheses, TJ Kirk. And I have to admit, yeah, I am a liberal, and uh, I'm definitely greasy, so I can't really deny any of those charges. Uh, but I do hate showers significantly more than I hate you. Like, if if my options are take a shower or watch a Hunter Avalone video, I'm probably going to take the Hunter Avalone video option. The only time I really want to take a shower is if I'm just too disgustingly greasy to even continue. Like, when I start sliding off of my chair just from the sheer amount of grease, like, it's like, oh, shit, can't even stay stable. I'm like the greased up deaf guy from fucking Family Guy or some shit. Then I take a shower. But, uh, you know, like if, um, if someone's just like, hey, watch this Hunter Avalon video. I'm like, oh, that's going to be painful. But, you know, I'll probably get a laugh out of it. Sure. So, you know, I, I, f I feel like, you know, you're, you're mischaracterizing me here. I don't, I don't hate you, uh, Hunter. I just think you're an annoying twat. The moment we've all been waiting for has finally happened. TJ dropped a 30-minute video shitting all over my speech that I gave. The moment we've all been waiting for. Hmm. It's kind of telling lingo. Been waiting for my acknowledgement with bated breath, huh? Okay. At the high school leadership summit. Now, when I first saw that he made a video on me, my first thought was, This is bound. Bound. To be horrible. Let's get started. This is Hunter Avalon. Yeah, 
Yeah, let's get started. Uh, I'm sorry about this uh, whole, like, um, nested response thing. I think that this always gets kind of clumsy at this stage where there's two different versions of me talking, and then there's a version of him talking, and then if he responds to this, it's even more convoluted. And the more we respond back and forth in this manner, it just gets more and more convoluted where there's you know, 15 different hunters talking to 16 different TJs, and it's all very convoluted and complicated, and it's already getting that way just from, you know, uh, seeing uh, myself talking there versus myself talking here and vice versa and all that. I mean, you know, whatever. It gets it gets a little messy, but that's okay, I guess. Um, full speech at HSLS. I don't know what HSLS is. I don't know what it is. But anywhere that would let Hunter Avalone do a full speech... Let's hear it. Okay, so right off the bat, we see that a 40-year-old man who still looks like he's in his... I'm 33. Come on. I'm 33. <laughs> I don't understand the attack anyway. Like, you're going to be 40 one day. I'm going to be 40 one day sooner than you. Like, I don't understand what the age thing has to do with anything. Like, are you saying that I shouldn't wait? I mean, like, are you basically making the argument that I shouldn't waste my time talking to you because I'm too old to be doing it? I'm just too old to possibly have any sort of critique of Hunter Avalon. Like, you can only fight people in your same age group. Is that what the... I mean, I don't know. That seems like it's the implication there to me. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we, we, should, we should move on. His steampunk phase is dissing me really hard, so let's go ahead, sit tight. My steampunk phase? I don't know if... I don't know what the fuck my fashion um, sense is. But I don't really feel like it's steampunk. I mean, I don't I don't feel like I threw on a jacket with some pins and a really loud shirt. I don't feel like that's steampunk, you know. Steampunk is like, you know, I got some some so a top hat and some crazy goggles and like some feathered shoulder pads and all kinds of weird stuff on my wrist or something, you know. Like this is this isn't steampunk. This is just I don't know like Dork punk or something. And here's some of his very valid criticisms. Okay. You know, it's not hard to see that the left wants to control you. Uh. <laughs> control leads to power. And that control is what the power. Is. What is power is. Look at how the ability to control. Control leads to power. No shit, Sherlock. All right. Well, so far we're off to a fantastic start. Calling me out over a technicality. Great job. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I guess I can see how you would find that to be a technicality, but within the context of your speech, I don't really think that is a technicality, dude. Uh, the problem is that the whole overarching message of your speech is liberals are bad because they want to control you and they want to brainwash you. So me quibbling with you over the definition of control and how it relates to power is not really a technicality. I mean, the, the idea, the, the concept of control that you're using is pretty integral to your overarching point. So if you can't define control properly and you can't define its relationship to the concept of power properly, then that's really damaging to your overall case. I, I feel like you probably understand that. So are you playing dumb here or are you just really dumb? Reacted when they lost potential power during the 2016 election. They, they didn't lose potential power. They lost power. Again, trying to roast me on technicalities. And also, TJ, what I said was correct. They did lose potential power. When the election took place, there was a potential for Democrats to have power. They lost it, therefore losing potential power. They provided... Okay, I mean, fair enough. But in a more concrete way, what they lost was not potential power. They lost power. You know, everyone has uh, potential power. You know, even like the, the guy on the, uh, the street corner who, you know, is destitute and homeless. Maybe he scraps enough uh, money together to buy a Powerball ticket. Well, that's potential wealth. Potential power might be coming his way. You know, oh, I, I won the Powerball. I was able to buy this ticket and I won the Powerball. Yeah, so there's, there's always the, the potential of power. But when we're talking about Democrats and Republicans uh, fighting each other in, you know, for votes to win the election, to win the presidency, both of them have the potential for power there. But what they're fighting for is not potential power. What they're fighting for is power. That's the prize. Eye on the prize. The prize is not potential power. Everyone already has that. 
In fact, the Democrats never did lose potential power because in four years, there's another election. Well, two years from now, but four years from when they lost. So they, they, they didn't lose potential power. They still have potential power. They'll always have potential power as long as we are still uh, at least ha- use some of the vestiges of a democracy. So potential power isn't what's lost. Actual power is what's lost. Uh, and granted, it's only for a four to eight year period or maybe more, depending on how many times the Republicans can take the White House or the Democrats can take it, whatever. Um, yeah, but, you know, I guess I could see it's a technicality, but, you know, I'm, I'm responding to you live. I mean, I'm watching a live speech and just tearing apart as I go. It's not like I watched the whole thing, came up with what I'm going to say and then just kind of, uh, you know, uh, tried to work from that angle. The angle I worked from was I'm going to do a live reaction to everything this guy's saying. So yeah, that sort of engenders nitpickiness. But uh, I think I'm ultimately right on it, but it is just a technicality. It doesn't really matter, as you point out. Safe spaces. They pretended to be head Donald Trump. Curse us all with that stampede of unshowered feminists, also known as the Women's March. You got a real big thing about showering, don't you? Like... You know, it's like that. That's like the ultimate insult in your world is like they didn't shower. Did you see that? They didn't even fucking shower. They're not clean. All right. You know, I mean, hygiene's important. Just don't know how much it really matters in terms of, you know, politics. Like the guy who takes a shower and says two plus two equals five is not right because he took a shower. The guy who says two plus two is four and is greasy and dirty, and his, his, you know, hair is unkempt, and he's covered in fucking, you know, grease and dirt and grime, that doesn't make that guy wrong. Only, only the, the, the facts can make someone right or wrong, right? You know, showering really doesn't have much to do with it. Is that another technicality? I mean, it seems like it's pretty important to you. Because already in this video, you've tried to go on after me for not showering enough. You've tried to go after feminists for not showering enough. I mean, at what point do we just say, hey, is this shower shit really that important in the realm of politics? Now, if we were having a debate on hygiene and you wanted to bring up that I don't shower enough, all right, fair game. But this isn't a debate on hygiene. This is a debate on fucking politics. So I don't really see how showering has much to do with any fucking thing. So, <coughs> so far we have like a caricature of the left. Boo. I mean, this is like, boo. I was talking about conservative animal and, and, and I was like, right now, they're in their trailer parks, drinking their beers, polishing their guns. Yeah, all right, we get it. This is an over-the-top caricature of like all the worst elements of your homes. Okay? Can we get some substantive? TJ, the examples I gave of how the left reacted was a little bit more than just a caricature of the left. I'm sorry you can't just write it off that easily. You're comparing- uh, not character, caricature. Oh, I'm sorry. More technicalities from me right there, right? Okay. Caricature, though. Future reference. Caricature. It was also incorrect and didn't make a lot of sense. I mean, sure, in Obama won, maybe there were some rednecks sitting in a trailer park angry about it. The difference is the left protests were massive events supported by most members on the left. When Kathy Griffin beheaded Donald Trump, sure, she was met with some backlash, but she also received support from anti-Trumpers and from other Hollywood actors. And even better example is the Women's March. The Women's March was a massive event supported by celebrities across the country and the mainstream media. The event drew 500,000 to a million attendees. This is more than simply a character of the left. These are massive liberal protests supported by mainstream liberalism. Also, you really want to talk about me. I mean, did you forget about the Tea Party? Like, you remember the Tea Party protests, right? Obama got elected. A bunch of rednecks went out. I mean, it wasn't just rednecks, just conservatives in general. They went out and said, we're tired of the way conservatives have been doing things. We want a more hardline conservatism. And we're going to start kicking out some of these uh, Republican incumbents that we think are weak. And we're going to replace them with more hardline social conservative types who we think are going to be better to combat Obama. And what's happening now is exactly the same thing. A bunch of progressives who are tired of corporatist Democrats have said, you know what, we're going to start ousting these motherfuckers and we're going to replace them with hardcore progressives that we feel are more capable of dealing with Trump in a more substantive way. So what you're looking at really with the Women's March and stuff like that is just the mirror image of what the Tea Party protests were. Uh, There's an incumbent president 
of one party whom the other party absolutely despises, and so they root out what they consider to be weakness in their own party to attain a greater degree of ideological purity. Uh, you know, for the for the Tea Partiers, it was we want more socially conservative voices. We want more stronger anti-immigration voices. We want stronger anti-taxation voices uh, to represent us. We don't feel like we feel like a lot of these Republicans that represent us now are just career politicians who aren't really doing much for us. So we're going to do these big, massive protests and we're going to hold up signs of, you know, Nancy Pelosi with vampire fangs and blood dripping out of her mouth. And we're going to hold up pictures of uh, Obama where we make him look like Hitler or we make him look like Osama bin Laden. And we're going to, you know, march with our guns to support the Second Amendment. We're going to have armed marches and stuff. Um and now the left is doing the same thing. They hate Trump. So now they're going out there with Trump is Hitler and Trump is this and that. And he's the fucking Grinch and he's a bad guy. And, you know, we're tired of these corporatist Democrats who are just playing ball, who are just career politicians. We want to replace them with people who are genuine progressives, who don't think that socialism is a dirty word, blah, blah, blah. It's the exact same thing. So I'm, I'm surprised that you don't see the parallels Maybe it takes a 40-year-old like me to actually remember the Obama years properly. And you're just coming at it from the vantage point of, I've never read any history books. I've never, I'm not even familiar with recent history, so I'm going to act like what the left is doing now is totally unprecedented, when in actuality there's an example of something similar happening on the right just like eight years ago, nine years ago. So it's kind of weird. Uh, but of course, that was during my YouTube heyday, around 2009 or so, back when I was relevant. So maybe I just have a better uh, memory of that stuff because that's when I was on top of my game, uh, you know, as a 40 year old and all. Over the top characters about the worst aspects of your opponents. Do you think that just somehow sunk what I said? Meanwhile, you do the same thing throughout this 30 minute video. Are you, you're speaking at the high school leadership summit, right? With the big I heart capitalism sign on one side of you and with speakers that come out and say, like, they left you through a bunch of fucking cocksuckers now, kids. I know conservatives teach your kids about guns. I know they teach about hunting and fishing and ATVs and whatever the fuck else Heartland America has a big old fucking boner for. They've been snot-nosed hoggers, posse of liberal evil fuckwit twit assholes who suck and are fundamentally evil and wrong in all ways are totally unfair towards us conservatives. Almost every liberal agenda, every liberal talking point can be traced back to the core goal and even the core outcomes at times to control. The left wants control. That's what this whole politics thing is about. This is two factions, two different ideological factions, which encompass a bunch of smaller factions within each of them, vying for power and control. That's what politics is. Well, you're not entirely wrong, but you're certainly not correct either. You're correct when you say in politics both sides are fighting for some level of control. However, the left is much more set on control. One of the core values supported by the right is the freedom of speech and the freedom of thought. The left, however, wants to control how someone speaks. You're not allowed to say this because it's offensive. You're not allowed to say this because it's racist. They want to control how someone thinks. If you're black, you can't vote this way. If you're black, you can't think this way. The left are always behind these massive protests to try and shut down speakers and opposing opinions. Even li um, <clears throat> here's the problem with that. So let's let's talk about the free speech thing first of all. Um. What has been the most robust defense of freedom of speech offered up by any organization in American history? It's been by the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union. They've defended the free speech of Nazis. When the Nazis wanted to march through uh, Skokie, which is a predominantly Jewish town, uh, the town tried to stop them. You know who fought on their behalf? It was the ACLU. The ACLU, a liberal organization dedicated to the protection of the First Amendment, defended the Nazis' right to march. They've defended the KKK. They've defended the Westboro Baptist Church. Uh, they defended the, um, the, the conservative alt-right guys who wanted to march in Charlottesville. Because that's an organization that understands that freedom of speech must be preserved, even if it means allowing people who you might personally revile to speak, you know, and I, I'm sure that, uh, you know, when it comes to the KKK, when it comes to the Nazis, when it comes to the alt-right, I'm sure that you're probably every bit as against them as I am. But when it comes to their freedom of speech, the freedom of speech that of the most detested people in this country, it has not traditionally been conservatives that have stood up for their rights. It's been liberals. And now to this idea that liberals uh, try to exert more control than conservatives. Well, when we were having the gay marriage debate in this country, should gay people have the right to marry? Who was against that right? It wasn't liberals, it was conservatives. What about abortion rights? 
Who, who's constantly uh, against that? Conservatives. There's tons of things that are considered rights today that have been fought tooth and nail and continue in some cases to be fought tooth and nail by conservatives. So I don't understand how you could say that uh, conservatives don't try to control people. Of course they do. Uh, liberals do too. That's kind of the point. I'm, what I'm saying to you is not you're bad and liberals are good uh, because that would just be the mirror image of what you're saying, which is conservatives are good and liberals are bad. I mean, I just think that these kind of worldviews where we're right, they're wrong, we're good, they're bad, I don't think that serves anybody. Uh, what, I'm, what I champion is let's have an actual discourse. Let's have an actual discussion. Um, and, you know, I do it in a very blunt way. And when I see someone like you make a speech to a bunch of high school kids that is completely devoid of substance and is entirely about divisiveness, entirely about setting people against each other, entirely about saying you should be at their throat because they're at your throat, I think that that's counterproductive to my overarching message, which is a message of, you know, not let's all get along, but let's get along well enough to have a real fucking discussion about the issues that are important to all of us. Because right now, those sorts of discussions are being stunted. And they're not just being stunted by conservatives. They're being stunted by liberals and conservatives. Like, just a moment ago, I talked about the great um, liberal championing of free speech traditionally. But unfortunately, a lot of liberals have lost their way on that. Like, uh, I, I mentioned that the ACLU stood up for the protesters in Charlottesville. Well, after that happened, a bunch of liberals got mad at the ACLU, said, we're dropping our membership. And the ACLU backed down and said, all right, we're not going to support stuff like that anymore. So uh, free speech is being abandoned. And it's not just being abandoned on one side or the other. It's being abandoned on both sides of the aisle. We're, we're adopting this attitude of free speech for me, but not for thee. It's okay. My free speech is good. Your free speech is bad. That's not sustainable. That's not sustainable at all. If, if we're going to preserve freedom of speech, then we have to have the attitude about freedom of speech that even though I fucking hate your guts, even though I despise everything you have to say, I believe absolutely in your freedom of speech. And in fact, I am willing to die to protect it. That's, what, that's the attitude that an American should have towards the concept of freedom of speech if they truly believe in it. It is an all-or-nothing proposition. It is a do-or-die proposition. So that's where I'm coming from. Liberal sources can admit to this. There are many more examples of the left vying for direct control. Wait, the left wants to control the youth. Uh, are you, you're speaking at the high school leadership summit, right, with the big I heart capitalism sign on one side of you and with speakers that come out and say, like, these lefties are a bunch of fucking cocksuckers, huh, kids? And then you're saying they, they want to control the youth. What are you trying to do? Well, that's a massive reach. There is a huge difference between sharing my opinion and my viewpoint and allowing the listeners to take it or leave it and telling people that if you do not think a certain way, you are morally wrong. If you vote a certain way, you are a bad person. Plus, these kids all chose to attend this event, whereas more times than not, there's a liberal bias pushed on kids in school where they are forced to attend. To try and claim that me sharing my opinion is the same as trying to control is ludicrous and makes no sense. It's healthy to allow these students to hear other opinions, to hear my own viewpoints. No one is telling anyone how to think. I mean, by your logic, are you trying to control all of your subscribers every time you upload a video with your opinion in it? Of course not. There's also a time and a place for sharing political opinions. If a school student is sitting in class and the teacher is going off on a tangent about why Donald Trump is the worst, that seems a lot more like indoctrination or pushing a viewpoint on young people, whereas this conference was a conservative conference. Conservative students willingly attended to hear conservative speakers. There's a huge difference. I mean, I was lucky enough to be homeschooled, but you guys, uh, you guys got it really rough. I mean, walking into- Lucky enough to be homeschooled. Uh, so to just address that point really quick, later on in the video that you're showing me reacting to here, you point out this channel called, um, like, g gay kids or uh, uh, queer kids stuff. And uh, you act like, oh, my God, it's the end of the world, this, this channel. And we went and looked at the channel, and the channel has, like, 12,000 subscribers and is getting, like, you know, two or 3,000 views a video. Like, no one's engaging with it. No one's watching it. And the point that I brought back up to you is there's nothing forcing anyone to watch this channel. It's completely optional. And... Uh, you know, now it seems like you're using that same point back at me where you're saying, well, my speech is totally optional. Yeah, I mean, your speech is totally optional. And I assume that the kids 
who are there listening to it chose to go listen to a conservative speaker. There's nothing wrong with that. But my problem with your speech is not, hey, th- we're going we're gonna to get together and we're all going to be conservative and talk about conservative ideas. My problem with your speech is that, uh, as I said before, it's nothing but fuck the left. The left is your enemy. You should hate them. That's what it's about. Anybody who watches that speech and thinks it's about anything else besides that is wrong. And if you're going to say that it's about anything else besides that, then you're wrong. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I don't see how you could say, oh, it's not brainwashing. It's not control. I mean, yeah, when I, do, when I speak to people, I'm not hoping to control them necessarily overtly. But do I hope that they come around to my way of thinking? Obviously, I do. Am I trying to persuade them? Yes, I am. So, yeah, I mean, there is an element of control there, for sure. If, if, you're, if you're asking if it's, like, the same as, you know, believe or else, or me putting a gun to their head and saying, you better say these things or you're in big fucking trouble, obviously it's not the same as that. But neither were your examples of brainwashing. Uh, an optional-to-watch YouTube channel is not an example of brainwashing. What I was pointing out was that by the criteria that you yourself have set up for what brainwashing is, your conference is brainwashing. Now, personally, I don't think that a YouTube channel that propagates a certain message to kids is brainwashing any more than I think that what you're doing here is brainwashing. What I was pointing out is that what you're doing is brainwashing by your own criteria, not by mine, by yours. The only chick I was able to check out at school is my mom. TJ, let's not argue about who looks more inbred. That is a fight you will definitely lose, my friend. Stephanie over here just came. Let's not fight about... Okay, well, I, I never said you were inbred. I said that you like to stare at your mom's ass, which... Why was that touchy? I mean, you know, I don't even know why you responded to that. I mean, that was just like something I pulled out of my ass. Like, <laughs> you know, you, he was homeschooled. Only chick he got to stare at with his, was his mom. I mean, it's like a grade school level insult. It was just kind of like a little throwaway line, you know, not if I'd written it out in a script, I probably would have cut it like that doesn't have anything to do with anything. But the fact that you responded to it just makes it feel like maybe there was something to it, you know. Uh, But anyway, I never said you were inbred. I just said you like to stare at your mom's ass. Um, And as for which of us looks more inbred, I don't know. I mean, I don't have any deformities. I mean, if you're saying that, I'm more, you're basically saying, you know, I'm more attractive than you, TJ, so therefore I look less inbred. I mean, ugliness isn't a byproduct of being inbred. Deformities are. Birth defects are. I don't have any of those. In fact, I mean, genetically, I'm pretty fucking uh, impressive on a base level. I got uh, blonde hair, blue eyes. That's prized in a lot of circles. Not necessarily my own. Uh, I'm six foot six. I'm reasonably strong, even though I don't work out or anything like that. All of my problems really stem from um, my own inability to care for myself. Uh, You know, like the hygiene thing, like we were talking about earlier, you know, like I don't brush my teeth as much as I should. I don't shower as much as I should. I don't eat right. I like to do drugs, you know, stuff like that. I mean, that's nothing to do with breeding. That's just a series of uh, what most people would say are poor personal choices, although I'd still make those choices because I think they're fun. But whatever, you know, it's a different strokes for different folks kind of thing. I'm a genderqueer, non-binary, brave little toaster. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what am I, what, what's the joke? Someone came out as a toaster and they're getting applauded, but someone who gets an A is not? Is that the point? Well, you know you're desperate when you start dissecting jokes. Obviously, TJ, people don't come out as toasters. That was a little joke meant to play into the insanity of how many gender identities there are. I mean, I said right in the clip, what's the joke? So obviously I recognized it as a joke. But, you know, jokes have to have some element of comedic exaggeration, right? So what's the exaggeration? The toaster thing? I mean, that, I guess that's the exaggeration. Um, I just, I feel like a joke has to have a hint of, of truth in it. And I don't think that there's enough of an analogousness between, wow, I just, I don't feel right in this body. I just, I feel like I should have, you know, uh, breasts. I do actually, but like, you know, let's say I'm you, you know, or a skinny kid or whatever the hell, 
you know, in school, like I, I feel like I should have tits. I feel like I should have a vagina. I feel like I want to appear female. Uh, and that's, you know, everything about my brain chemistry is telling me you're a girl, you're a girl, you're a girl, but outwardly I look like a boy. I don't really feel like that's the same thing as being like, I'm a toaster. Now, obviously, like I said, you're using comedic exaggeration, but I don't know. I feel like the exaggeration rises to such a level that it no longer even, uh, it's no longer in the same ballpark. I mean, I feel like you exaggerated it too much for it to be funny to me. Now, obviously, when you're playing to a conservative crowd and they just think the entire concept of uh, transgenderism and gender dysphoria dysphoria is uh, totally ludicrous, then I guess the toaster thing works for that crowd. It doesn't work for me because, you know, I don't really I don't really view transgender people that way. You know, if we're talking about like other kin or something, some of those motherfuckers literally do think they're a toaster. So I, I guess, you know, I could see the point there. Um, but I don't know, uh, just to me, it wasn't a good joke. Maybe, uh, you know, like, uh, I'm glad it worked for your crowd. Once again, not really an important talking point or or anything, you know, just different sensibilities being brought to the conversation. But, uh, for me, I just thought it was silly and ridiculous and, uh, didn't really have much connection to reality. I don't view it as some sort of underlying truth that, People are going around making statements that are roughly equivalent to saying I'm a toaster and expecting to be taken seriously. Um, You know, I mean, obviously we've seen these people, you know, you 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 started this video off by saying TJ, you've made, you know, I I like some of TJ's older videos where he made fun of, you know, SJWs and stuff. Uh, So, you know, I'm aware of that kind of stuff. I know that there's these ridiculous people out there. I guess the real problem I have with your joke is when you present it as like, this is so mainstream now. There's so many of so much of this going on. It's just it's uh, ubiquitous throughout our culture. Tons of people going around saying, I'm a toaster. I'm a toaster. I'm a toaster. There's not that many. You know, I mean, it's just not a significant margin of people. Um, I don't know. It's just it's just, it didn't work for me as a joke. But, um, you know, more power to you. Nowadays. This is also meant to highlight the fact that many people rely on a gender identity to make up for a personality. They use gender identity to get applause, validation, or to shape who they are rather than their actual accomplishments or their character. I mean, you know, if you felt like you were in the wrong body, then yeah, that's going to be sort of a central preoccupation of your mind, especially when, like, if society was just like, oh, you don't, you feel like you should be a girl? Well, then go ahead, do it. Yeah, we don't give a shit. That's fine. You're a girl now. If that was just the response, then they wouldn't be able to make that they're so, this is so central to my identity this is so central um but that's not how it goes i mean there's tons of opposition to trans people and trans rights tons of people get apoplectic when it's like the trans kid's gonna go in the bathroom i mean like we did a story on flash fried not too long ago about a uh, student who um you know, uh, was a, a trans student who went into the uh, girls' bathroom and uh, parents at the school started sending death threats to the kid. Not other students, mind you. Parents are saying, we need to kill this kid. This kid's a piece of shit, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so there's that kind of reaction. So, yeah, I mean, when you're faced with that, of course it's going to be a central part of your identity because you're still fighting for your right to exist, you know, the, the, the future acceptance of trans people is by no means guaranteed. So, of course, they have a central preoccupation with that. Um, you know, I, I don't think it's there to substitute for a personality. I think it's just that, hey, by virtue of what I am, I have to struggle to fit in. I have to struggle to survive in this culture. I have to justify myself to people constantly. So, um, you know, I-, I can see why it becomes a central preoccupation. The YouTube channel known as Queer Kid Stuff. <gasps> now, the name alone doesn't give you herpes. It creates extreme... Keep away from me, YouTube channel that I'm perfectly capable of never watching. It liberal videos for children as young as three years old. Oh, that's Although it only has 11,000 subscribers, it is endorsed by the Huffington Post and recently... Right, so, an obscure YouTube channel with 11,000 subscribers, and you're shouting it out to probably more people in the room... <laughs> than actually watch any of the fucking videos on it. Like, why are you giving this attention? If this was, like, the biggest channel on YouTube, or it was even a big channel in the first place, then maybe you could fucking try to make some kind of case against it. Maybe you could try to make some kind of case for why it's wrong or it's bad. 
but it's an obscure fucking channel. The point is not the size of the channel or even the viewership. This was an example I gave of the leftist agenda to indoctrinate young children. The point was that the channel was obscure, yet being promoted by the Huffington Post. Countless Huffington Post articles all feature queer kid stuff videos. Huffington Post is a massive liberal publication with over 140 million monthly viewers. Again, my point was not the size. Yeah, well, that doesn't that just kind of <laughs> attest to the fact that it's not working? Like, when you have a publication like a, uh, the Huffington Post with 140 million uh, unique viewers a month or whatever you just said, and they keep pushing this one YouTube channel, and it has 12,000 subscribers, and its videos get like two or 3,000 views a video, then obviously, even if it is brainwashing, which I don't agree that it is, it's not working. So who cares? Eyes of the channel, it was to highlight the overarching agenda that you are denying. Plus, I mean, TJ, later in this video, when you're discussing gun control, you say, The vast majority of this country believes in gun control, but it can't happen because the gun lobby is too fucking powerful. It can't happen because you guys that are so pro-gun that you're stupid are a vocal minority. So you admit that a vocal minority has a lot of influence and power. In this case, enough to decide whether gun laws should be changed or not. Yet you no, I never said a vocal minority has a lot of influence and power. I said a vocal minority can have a lot of influence and power. And a lot of it depends on... How big of, I mean, like, the minority still has to be somewhat fucking sizable, all right? Like, comparing a YouTube channel with 12,000 subscribers that gets two or 3,000 views a video to the gun lobby, which is supported by millions of Americans, there's just no fucking comparison there. Now, even though poll after poll after poll says a majority of Americans support gun control, there's still a sizable chunk of Americans who oppose it. I think it's something like 30 or 40 percent of Americans, uh, you know, oppose any sort of gun control. It depends on the poll you're looking at, but it's, it's a ballpark around there. Now, 30 to 40 percent of the population, that's still a minority, but that's a sizable minority. And it's a vocal minority. It's a minority that puffs itself up so big that someone who's just looking at the cultural landscape might assume that it is the majority. A YouTube channel, an obscure one with a couple thousand views a video, is not able to accomplish that effect. No one's like going on, uh, you know, social media or walking around in public and thinking like, man, it seems like everyone's on this queer kid stuff bandwagon these days. They're not. I mean, it's a ridiculous comparison. You write off the example I gave of this channel because it's small, yet it's also considered a vocal minority. Not a lot of subscribers, but being promoted and supported by loud liberal voices. So you're yeah. willing to admit that something, despite its size, can be powerful and influential when it comes to guns, but not when it comes to indoctrinating children? If it... uh, I already explained the differences there. I mean, this is a really dumb comparison. Vocal minority is powerful enough to sway gun laws by your own accord. Then a small channel supported by loud liberal voices is certainly enough to support my point that there's an overarching liberal agenda. You know, you can only further... I mean, yeah. Look, if your point is there's a liberal agenda... I never disagreed with that. This wasn't about, does this channel have an agenda? Do these people promoting this channel have an agenda? Does the left in general have an agenda? There's several agendas going on. Of course there are. Uh, the right has agendas. Right, right wingers have agendas. Left wingers have agendas. Both of them propagate uh, propaganda. Both of them try to get you while you're young, try to hook that youth vote or whatever. I mean, like, yeah, no one denied that that's happening. What I denied is that it's evidence of brainwashing. That was my denial. And once again, your comparison between, uh, like, super pro-gun people and this obscure YouTube channel, completely fucking nonsense your agenda by trying to brainwash naive children your agenda might be stupid yeah conservatives don't teach their children about the greatness of the military and the flag i mean we we're just talking a moment ago about the pledge of allegiance every day school kids across this country have to stand up put their hand over their heart stare up at a fucking flag and recite an oath of loyalty to it. That seems more like brainwashing to me than some optional to watch YouTube channel that no one's watching. Well, the military is what keeps us safe and protects our freedoms. There's nothing wrong with teaching your kids about the military or to respect this country and the flag. You're really reaching again. I'm talking about brainwashing. Teaching three-year-olds about being gay, non-binary, or a bunch of other things that are inappropriate for children. I never said teaching your kids standard liberal ideas was even a bad thing. I think kids should be taught to be kind, to respect all races and all sexualities. Every parent is going to share their own ideals with their child, but this is not what I was talking about in my speech. I was talking about an agenda to push far-left ideals on impressionable children. Secondly, your example you gave about standing for the pledge was bullshit and not logical at all. School kids do not have to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. In 1943, the Supreme Court ruled that forcing school kids to recite the pledge or punishing them for refusing was a violation of First Amendment rights. Try fact-checking next time. Okay, well, 
my fiance, uh, Chelsea Stanton, was uh, a school kid in New Jersey who refused to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, and they tried to kick her out of school. She had to actually look up local laws in New Jersey to find out that uh, the rule that said you had to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance was uh, ruled unconstitutional 30 years before, and they just never abided by that ruling. Um, And, you know, when a bunch of school kids go to school, uh, like when you're a little kid and it's like, hey, kids, time to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I never once heard a teacher say, by the way, it's completely optional. If you don't feel like you want to do that, you don't have to. Uh, As for saying that, you know, we should teach our kids that it's good to love the military. We should teach our kids that it's good to love the flag. Well, no, we should teach our kids that it's good to question those things. Engendering a sense of blind loyalty to the country, that's not a good thing. That's a bad thing. That's like a Nazi Germany fucking thing. To just say America is inherently good and it's always right and it's never done anything bad and it's never done anything wrong, that's how we get shit like Iraq and Afghanistan. That's how we get shit um, like uh, the, 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 the fucking blind support of any sort of military interventionist campaign. That's how we get people who to this day think that America's done no wrong in the world and that we're just a force for good. Like, no, you know, oh yeah, Iran is fucked up, uh, but, you know, uh, it, it's good uh, because, uh, you know, we intervened there. You know, we replaced a democratically elected leadership with a puppet who was then overthrown and then it radicalized the whole country. But, you know, whatever, it's good. Uh, it's good that America created ISIS by our meddling in uh, Iraq. It's good that America um, supports 70% of the world's dictatorships. It's good that we're allies with Saudi Arabia. Uh, It's good that we uh, provide tremendous military technology to countries like Israel that have uh, openly racist policies and stuff like that. It's bad to question those things. It's good to just accept them because America is exceptional and we're just inherently good and we're always good and it's just we're just fucking like the shining city on the hill. We're just a beacon of hope for the rest of the world. But it's bullshit, dude. It's absolute bullshit. No, we shouldn't teach kids the military's good. America's good. We should teach kids the military should be questioned. The government should be questioned. All of these things should be questioned. You should never just blindly accept anyone's authority. Uh, you shouldn't just be an automaton to God and country. I'm sorry, you're an atheist, so just country for you, I guess. Hogg is an idiot and adamantly detests conservatives. David Hogg is now influencing young minds everywhere. Unlike this guy on stage who obviously is very fair-minded towards liberals, right? David Hogg detests conservatives! David snot nose Hogg is posse of liberal, evil, fuckwit, twit assholes who suck! Is this guy off his meds again? Great job putting words in my mouth. My point was that he's a moron, made famous by liberal media because of his hatred of conservatives. I mean, I didn't really put words in your mouth. I get, I mean... Yeah, I exaggerated your insult towards David Hogg, but you did call him David snot Nose Hogg, and you shit all over his agenda when he's doing essentially the same thing you're doing. He's going out there and letting his opinion be known. Now, you can criticize that. You can hate his guts. You can attack his opinion, and you clearly have, but you can't do all that and then act like, but we're civil. That was my criticism there, is that You're pretending as if you're some sort of voice of civility in all of this, and you're not. You're just the mirror image of what you detest. That was the point of my video, and it's a point that I've really yet to see you address in any sort of substantive way. ...and our constitutional rights, therefore influencing more young minds. If someone hated on liberals, they'd be branded as alt-right by the media and forgotten. David Hogg, however, supported the overall liberal agenda, so he was made famous and influential. You seem really hung up on minor technicalities while ignoring my overall point. Uh, (laughs) That would be the charge I'd levy against you. All right, well, let's just take a look here. Your overarching point of your video is liberals are bad because they want to control you and they want power and they try to propagate their beliefs and they try to propagate all these far left beliefs and it's bad. Well, you're the same. (laughs) You're exactly the same. You want control. You want power. Your side, do you know, I mean, like, yeah, far left people do try to raise far left kids. Moderate left people try to raise moderate left kids. Centrist people try to raise centrist kids. You know, uh, (laughs) 
uh, you know, right pe- right wing people try to raise right wing kids. Far right people try to raise far right kids. If you have a couple of neo Nazis who have some kids, guess what? They're going to try to raise their kids to be fucking neo Nazis. This is not anything new. This is not even anything interesting. And by the way, people who are apolitical are probably not going to try to uh, make their kids embrace any sort of political philosophy. Uh, so across the spectrum. Yeah, what you have is a bunch of different ideological groups who are trying to raise their children in within the tradition of that group. Just like Christians try to raise Christian kids and Jews try to raise Jewish kids and Muslims try to raise Muslim kids and a bunch of couple of feminist parents are going to try to raise some feminist kids and so on and so forth. It's not it's not new, it's not unique, it's not brainwashing. Or if it is brainwashing, it's so across the board that it's not even worth singling out unless you're going to take it on from every side and say something along the lines of, you know, we need to start raising our kids in a very neutral fashion and allow them to formulate their own beliefs. If that was your overarching message, then I could maybe say, hey, that's an interesting idea. Let's talk about that. But what you're not doing that. You're singling out one side and saying, look at what they're doing, look at what they're doing, look at what they're doing. And you're not looking back at your own side and say, well, look at what we're doing. Why don't we, why don't you, why don't you take on that? Why don't you take on the brainwashing that's going on on your side? You know? And, uh, you know, whatever, let's, let's, we got very little of your video left. Let's, let's take a look. 90% of your criticisms of the left, maybe even more. Could just as easily point at the right, and they just work just as easily. TJ, even if my criticisms can be directed at the right, which I don't think they can, that doesn't... Well, you're wrong. They can, yes. In a million ways, they can. Not debunk a word of what I've said about the left. That's not... That's true. It doesn't. But it does make your singling out of the left preposterous, which is my point, which seems to be the point that you're ignoring. Not an argument. It's just like you're just... You have, like, sample... You have a confirmation bias, sample blindness. It's like anything that confirms my viewpoint is true, anything that contradicts it, I don't even see. Well, that's just bullshit. One of my largest YouTube series consists of me attending liberal rallies. And although, yes, I usually do some trolling at the end, the first half always consists of us going around and talking to people and hearing another opinion and having a healthy discussion. Your claim that I'm blind to any outside opinions or viewpoints is not true and can be debunked by my own videos. Well, TJ, your entire video... Well, I don't watch your videos. Except for these two. And I guess some of the ones I might have seen on Drunken Peasants. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm not an expert in your content, and you're clearly not an expert in mine. So whatever, you know, I mean, it's fine. Uh, you know, I'm sure that to some extent we're both arguing from positions of ignorance about each other and what we've done, and I'm sorry if I mischaracterized you there, but uh, from what I saw in that speech, that was the impression I got, and that was the speech I was responding to. I'm not responding to the totality of you as a person. I'm not claiming that I can see the totality of what you are and what you represent just from watching one video, uh, but... That was the impression I got from that particular speech. Uh, I didn't see any sort of penchant for fair-mindedness. I didn't see any sort of uh, examination of your own beliefs. I only saw you attacking other people's beliefs, and you did it from a very dishonest basis, as we discussed earlier in this video. video was cheap, easily debunked drivel. You rely on extreme exaggeration. Does he mean drivel? I think you mean drivel. It's caricature, and it's drivel. Maybe you meant dribble. I don't know. Maybe we were playing basketball. I don't know. I thought we were boxing. You're hypocritical, and you conveniently overlook my overall point. Well, I'm definitely hypocritical, but <laughs> I'm less hypocritical than you. And get hung up on minor technicalities. Sorry, TJ. I wish you and your channel the best of luck. Please give this video a like, comment below, and subscribe to my channel. Well, I wish you the best of luck in being more intellectually honest. Your channel in its current form, based on what I've seen, I can't wish the best of luck. I'm sorry. Uh, I do wish you personally the best of luck. I hope that you develop a more fair-minded, even-handed approach to these sort of subjects. I hope that you start to use your charisma and your influence uh, in more productive ways uh, that uh, don't necessarily lead people astray and lead them towards divisiveness and hatred for one another. I hope that you make some content that actually tries to bring people together. Uh, And if you did those things, then I would say good luck to your channel. But if you're going to continue down this path of uh, divisiveness and hatred and making one side look bad and ignoring the flaws of your own side, then I got to say fuck your channel. I hope it explodes. Uh, Not in uh, explodes in terms of view count. I just hope it literally explodes into a Michael Bay uh, death ball. Yeah. So uh, thank you for responding. Uh, I appreciate it. I really didn't think you would, 
But I'm glad you did because it, it just got to further our discussion. And if you want to do anything else on this, if you want to continue this discussion, let's not do these videos back and forth. Uh, feel free to uh, write me on Twitter or Facebook. And let's just you and me sit down and have a dialogue. You know, I think that uh, if, if you want to continue this discussion, I think it's probably best on a face-to-face -face basis where we can explain ourselves to each other a little better. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, then that's fine. I don't really want to do it either. I'm just saying if you want to continue this, we can continue it that way. Um, but uh, I do appreciate your response. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, go fuck yourself.